Welcome to BioVivacious. BioVivacious is a YouTube channel dedicated to clear fundamental concepts of biosciences. Today we are going to talk about a very interesting topic that is about the alphabets of life. You know, scientists always thought that living matter is somehow it is different from the non-living matter. A major breakthrough came in 1828 when Waller synthesized urea which was considered to be an organic matter when he was able to synthesize in a laboratory from ammonium cyanide. He wrote to one of his friends that he is able to synthesize urea now without the requirement of a kidney or an animal. That was a major breakthrough that broke the barrier between the living and the non-living. Let us look at some of the attributes or the things or the points that differentiate a living being from a non-living being. If you look at living beings, it's very evident that number one, we are able to extract energy from its surrounding and we can make use of this energy. Point number two is that we are able to transfer information from one generation to the next generation. Point number three is that we are able to transfer generation uh, information from one generation to the next generation with the minimum amount of error. Point number three is that there is tremendous amount of physical and chemical stability in this genetic material. So therefore, a bat uh, another bacteria comes from a bacteria, we give birth to another human being. A cat will give rise to another kitten. In spite of all this, we come to point number four. That point number four is, even though there is tremendous amount of stability in genetic material, the genetic material can undergo stress, strain, it can undergo variation, adaptation to changing age, okay, and it can undergo mutation. When you look at uh, living beings, whether it is a bacteria or a human being or a plant, we are all ultimately made up of simple atoms or elements. Let us look at which are these elements that make us what we are. If you look at uh, the elements, we can put them under four different categories. If the first category of elements will fall under the covalent bond forming elements. So the first category is covalent bond forming. So which are, which are these elements which are in the covalent bond forming? You have hydrogen, uh, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sulfur. That is about six elements fall under this category. See, nature would have chosen these elements because they were abundant. They were the most available form when life was formed. So therefore nature has randomly picked up these elements. And the beauty of these elements, see 99% of our body weight is made up of hydrocarbons. And they are compounds related to carbon. Look at carbon for this matter. Carbon is able to form multiple bonds with these elements or with other elements. It can form single one, two, three. Uh, okay, so multiple bonds can be formed. That is one of the interesting aspects about the carbon. Oxygen plays a very important role in living system. Oxygen can easily bind with the carbon and forms carbon dioxide. That forms a way of circulating oxygen in the living system. Look at oxygen. Oxygen is a highly electronegative element. Maybe the third most electronegative element is oxygen after chlorine and fluorine. So oxygen plays important roles like it is it can get dissolved in water and it can sustain life. The entire marine system depends on the dissolved oxygen. 
Oxygen, because of its electronegative character, it can play a crucial role in electron transport chain, mainly to transfer electrons as well as for production of energy. See the beauty of oxygen being selected to be part of the, the, the living system. Look at a phosphorus or a sulfur. These two elements, they can, uh, they can form covalent bonds. Covalent bonds can be formed by liberation of a molecule of water. So therefore, when you invest a molecule of water, these bonds can be broken. And that becomes a very effective way of conserving energy. You will see that phosphate bonded molecules are energy conserving molecules like ATP, UTP, etc. Sulfate containing molecules also. Look at acetyl-CoA or succinyl-CoA. They are energy rich molecules. You see how nature has selected these molecules for preserving energy or playing a crucial role in living system. That is the first category of elements nature has selected, covalent bond forming elements. In the second category is monoatomic species. Okay, monoatomic species, which all elements will fall under monoatomic species? You have sodium, you have potassium, you have chlorine, you have magnesium, and you have uh, uh, calcium. So these are the monoatomic species mainly. Uh, there may not be any special particular reason for inducting them. But you will see that these elements are playing a crucial role like maintaining the osmotic balance. They are involved in maintaining you know uh, action potential. So uh, some of them are also involved in, in, in neutralizing the charge. For example, a molecule like magnesium is involved in neutralizing the charge on an ATP molecule. So this can be the reason why these monoatomic species are selected to be in the life process. In the third category of elements as part of our life is the trace elements. Trace elements, examples of trace elements can be manganese, iron, copper, cobalt and zinc. So these are the trace elements that are, that becomes part of life, life process. Nature would have selected these elements because if you look at them, they, they have more than one oxidation state. For example, uh, ferric to ferrous, cupric to cuprous, they have more than one oxidation state. And it becomes a very important molecule for transfer of electrons in the living system. You would have already studied the role of you know, copper and iron in the electron transport system. They become very efficient in transporting electrons. And if you look at these three categories, that is the, the covalent bond forming elements, in the monoatomic species, species and the trace elements, that forms the major portion of supporting life. Let us look at the atomic number of these elements. The lowest atomic number is of hydrogen, that is 1. And the highest atomic number in among all these elements, that is zinc, that is with the 30. In the periodic table, they are in the lower position. So this is with, with these elements, Life is formed. We are not made of gold or, or silver or platinum or such high molecular weight compounds, elements. We are made up of low molecular weight compounds and that gives life. In the first 30 elements of the periodic table. Um, what is important is Apart from this, there, is, there are other trace elements also, which forms a part of a, a living system. Which are these other trace elements? Let me use a different color to represent that. These are also trace elements. So if there can be boron, there can be aluminium, 
vanadium iodine molybdenum in some cases silicon and selenium etc these becomes really trace and they are present only in certain organisms for example we may have molybdenum and selenium we may not have silicon we may not have boron in our body plants may have boron or aluminum in the system so it is specific to certain organism so leaving this if you look at the first three points that is if you count this is 6 this is 5 and 5 we are made up of 16 elements so with these 16 elements life basic life is formed and using these 16 elements in the alphabets of life is created 